In March of 2024, the IRS released a new version of Form W-9, which you may recognize if you've ever opened a bank or financial account or worked for someone as an independent contractor. And despite the IRS claiming that the form is clearer and easier to fill out, there is still a chance for confusion when filling out this form. I'm the Tax Geek, and here is Form W-9, oversimplified. Individuals or businesses will have you fill out Form W-9 when they require a tax identification number to report to the IRS any payments to you that might be considered taxable income to you. You might be asked to fill out Form W-9 for any of the following reasons. You agree to work for someone as an independent contractor. You open a bank account or brokerage account. You sell a piece of real estate. You open a third-party network transaction account, such as Venmo, eBay, or PayPal, or you seek to accept credit or debit cards as payment. You apply for a home mortgage or student loan, or you enroll at college or university. A tax identification number can be a social security number, an employer identification number, an individual tax identification number, or ITIN, which is granted to individuals that do not qualify for Social Security numbers, or an adoption tax identification number, which is granted to a foreign individual that is in the process of being adopted by a U.S. national. Forms W-9 might be requested from individuals, businesses, trusts, or estates. Let's go ahead and look at Form W-9. It might seem simple on the surface, but there are areas on the form where it might be confusing or easy to make an error, especially if you have an LLC. In the header of Form W-9, information is entered including the name and address of the individual or entity and whether it is an individual or entity. If it is an entity, the type of entity is checked. In Part 1 of the form, the taxpayer identification number is entered. As I said earlier, this can be a Social Security number, ITIN or ATIN, which is entered here, or an employer identification number, which is entered here. Part 2 of the form is signed by the individual or representative of the entity, indicating that the tax identification number provided is correct and the person or entity is not subject to backup withholding. Backup withholding will be the subject of another video. Rather than explain how to fill out the form in general, let's look at several different scenarios and see how the form is filled out for each one. Let's start with individuals. For an individual that is not in business, the individual's name is entered on line 1, the individual sole proprietor box is checked, and a social security number is entered in part 1. The individual signs the form in part 2. For joint accounts or ownership, each joint owner must fill out the form. For an individual that is in business but does not use a trade name or have an LLC, the form is filled out the same way. For an individual that is in business and uses a trade name, but doesn't have an LLC, the name of the individual is entered on line 1 and the trade name is entered on line 2. As before, the individual sole proprietor box is checked. The individual provides their social security number in part 1 and signs part 2. For an individual in business who also has an LLC, but has not elected to be treated as a corporation for tax purposes, the name of the individual is entered on line 1, the name of the LLC is entered on line 2, and the individual sole proprietor box is checked. Do not check the LLC box because in this situation the LLC is disregarded when filing a tax return. Individuals in this situation can provide either their social security numbers or the LLC's employer identification number. If entering an EIN, the EIN must show up on the individual's Schedule C. For an individual in business who operates under an LLC and has elected a corporate structure for tax purposes, the name of the LLC is entered on line 1, the LLC box is checked, and the type of corporate structure, S for S Corporation or C for C Corporation, is indicated to the right of the LLC checkbox. In Part 1, the employer identification number of the LLC is entered, and the individual signs and certifies the form in Part 2. Now on to partnerships. If a partnership does not operate under an LLC, enter the name of the partnership on Line 1, check the Partnership box, and enter the partnership's EIN in Part 1. The partnership representative listed on the last tax return the partnership filed should sign the form. If a partnership does operate under an LLC, the name of the LLC is entered on line 1, 
the LLC box is checked, and P is entered in the space to the right. The EIN of the partnership should be entered in Part 1, and the partnership representative signs the form, same as before. Next, corporations. For corporations that have traditional corporate charters, these companies usually append Inc., Co., or Corp. to their trade names. The name of the corporation is entered on Line 1, and the type of tax treatment the corporation elects, either C or S, is checked in Box 3A. The corporation's EIN number is entered in Part 1, and any officer of the corporation can sign and certify the form. For multi-member entities that operate as LLCs and elect a corporate structure for tax purposes, the name of the LLC is entered on Line 1, the LLC box is checked in Box 3A, and the type of tax treatment, again, C or S, is entered to the right of the checkbox. As before, the entity's EIN is entered in Part 1, and any officer of the LLC can sign the form. Finally, all estates and trusts enter the name of the trust or estate on Line 1 and check the Trust Estate box in Box 3A. The employer identification number of the entity is entered in Part 1, and the administrator of the estate or trust, otherwise known as the fiduciary, signs and certifies the form. And that covers just about any situation where a Form W-9 may need to be completed. If your situation doesn't appear to be listed here, leave a comment and I'll try to figure it out for you. Or you can click on one of the links for additional information and resources given in the video description. If you found this video informative, liking and sharing the video would be most appreciated. Subscribe to the channel to see more oversimplifications of our overcomplicated tax system. And your questions, comments, and suggestions are always welcomed in the comment space below. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.